Have you ever had the experience where you've sat there and you've gone, wow, that's not what I expected? Or have you had that time in your life where you've gone, well, that's not what I expected, right? This text this morning is about that very idea, but expectations. Because you may be sitting there thinking, going in, okay, pastor, uh, this is Advent. Advent is about preparing for Jesus first co- First, celebrate his first coming and preparing for his second coming in here and you're reading the Palm Sunday Passion Story in Advent not sure I get this hang on hang on I'll get you there but where the story is going to begin we're going to pick you up in the middle of this Luke chapter 19 so if you would please grab your Bibles and open them to Luke chapter 19 And as you're doing that, I'm going to let you multitask and listen to me because I'm going to get you a little background as we go coming in. I'm going to take you back to the Old Testament. To understand this text in here, you've got to go back to the Old Testament. You've got to go back to the time of David. Before David became king, Saul was king. And after Saul died, as there was a great civil war, the people and the people, tribes and nations were at war with each other. And David brought peace and David brought unity to the people when he became king. And as he became, when he became king, he said, I need a place to rule that's mine. That's not anybody else's in here to unite the people. So he had his private army go and attack the city of Jerusalem and conquer the city of Jerusalem. So Jerusalem became his. And so you'll all very often hear the city, Jerusalem called the city of David. But it's not like you think is like the city of brotherly love. When you say brotherly love, it describes Philadelphia. It's another name for Philadelphia. When you say city of David referring to Jerusalem, what you're talking about, it's owned by him. Jerusalem was owned by King David. And by the kings that followed him, it was his personal possession. First thing you need to hang on to. Jerusalem is his the ki- possession of the king. It's the king's city. Second thing I need you to hang on to as we talk through this is when Solomon was an old man. He was old and he'd been years and he realized he's dying and he needs to designate a successor to, successor for him. God has chosen Solomon to be the next king. And so David calls Solomon and says, Solomon, what I need you to do is I want you to go down to the city of Gilgal. It's an ancient city where Saul was crowned king where a lot of the, where David was crowned king, where kings after him would be crowned. He says, I need you, Solomon, I need you to go down to Gilgal. And they're going to crown you king at Gilgal. And when you come back, Solomon, what I want you to do is I want you to ride my donkey. They went down and did that as Solomon was crowned king and he came back riding the king's donkey. And as he was coming into the city of Jerusalem, the city that was now going to be his, they were laying coats on the ground in front of him and they were shouted blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord second thing you hang on to that's the second thing third thing I need to hang on to is I'm going to fast forward you into about two years before our text about two years before Palm Sunday text Pilate has just been appointed governor of Judea and he has arrived at a town called Caesarea by the sea and arriving at Caesarea by the sea he gathers up his armies and he gets on his majestic white horse and he leads his armies on that some 40 mile trip from Caesarea by the sea up to Jerusalem and as they're coming up to Jerusalem Pilate riding his majestic horse and the armies behind him. As they're coming up to Jerusalem, the people had gotten wind of this. 
And when they got wind of this, what they did is the people of Jerusalem came out in mass. And the people of the countryside came out in mass. And they came and they blocked the way. And they threatened a riot. Because you see, the people, the Jews in Jesus' day, only the king rode into Jerusalem. Only the king, their king would ride into Jerusalem. And they forced Pilate to get off his horse. And Pilate had to walk into Jerusalem. And so now you come to our text in Luke chapter 19 and sets this up. This time, time as Jesus is entering, entering. A couple of things that are happening right in front of it, but right in front of this passage, is Jesus heals a blind man, blind Bartimaeus. He heals blind Bartimaeus in Jericho. And then he goes to Zacchaeus' house in Jericho and talks to Zacchaeus and has salvation has come to his house today. And then it starts up, verse, chapter 19, verse 11 is where I need you at first. And he comes in and it says, verse 11, as they, they being the crowd, they being the disciples, they being the people following with Jesus, they heard these things, he, Jesus, he proceeded to tell a parable because he was near to Jerusalem and because they supposed that the kingdom of God was to appear immediately. See, because the Jews had this expectation that a king was coming. They had these promises that they hung on to, these promises that were made to David. The promise made to David is that David, they said, David, your kingdom will never end. David, one of your sons will always sit on the throne. And they had these promises, they hung on to these promises that God had made, and they hung on to them for 400 years. And about 600 years before Jesus in here, the Babylonians came and destroyed the country. Carted off, carted off all the kings, carted off all the people, and the nation was destroyed. 600 years they had not had a king. 600 years they didn't have a nation. They were desperate for God to come back and God to fulfill His promise and God to bring His king into the city. Because their time that they were living in was much like ours. It was a time of fear, a time of oppression, a time of persecution, I mean real persecution. A time of persecution, a time if you were a Jew, your life was cheap or at least cheap to the Romans. It was a time of tension, and it was a time of great tension, both a political tension going on, but a more fundamental spiritual tension, a religious tension that's happening in the world. And the Jews were expecting God's king. They were expecting God to come and fulfill His promise to David, to fulfill His promise, bring God's king into His city, and God's king was going to solve their problems. Using violence if necessary, and to some would say, and violence, please. Violence was preferred. And come in and solve their problems. Verse 28, chapter 19, verse 28. And when he had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. Started that Palm Sunday entrance into Jerusalem. Now, what you need to understand, right, is all that background I gave you in here as Jesus is coming into Jerusalem, all the people that are seeing Jesus come into Jerusalem, they're going to know the same thing you just did. They're going to know all these things. They're going to see Jesus riding into Jerusalem and they're going to put all those pieces together and they're going to catch on immediately. Okay, this is the king coming into a city. We're hailing this guy Jesus of Nazareth, this rabbi from Galilee. We're hailing him as king. He's God's next king. Because this has never happened before. He is the next king. He is God's king coming into his city. They're going to catch all that as they go through as this is transpires. So what's the king do when he comes into his city? Verse 41. And when he drew near, to, drew near and saw the city, he wept over it. 
Jesus Christ. He comes into his city and he cries. Because he comes in and he sees the people and he sees the people's rebellion. He knows what God has done for them. He knows the grace that God has provided for them and how God has watched out for them from the time of Abraham, the time of Moses, to the time of the Exodus, to the time of the kings going in. And even since the time of the kings, how God has provided and watched over and God has given to them and God's grace has been with them. And they, Jesus sees their rebellion, how they've rejected God as they rebelled of what God has done. They've been going off and doing their own thing here. And he sees this. He sees their rejection. And he sits there and he sees and he knows that all these beautiful buildings that they laud over and magnify and think are wonderful, he knows the day is coming when they're going to get destroyed. When nothing's going to be left. He sees the day that's coming and the city's going to be wiped out. Jesus looks into the future and sees judgment on this people who've rejected God and rebelled against God. And he cries. He cries at it. And then he goes on, verse 45. And it says, As he entered the temple and began to drive out those who sold, saying to them, It is written, My house shall be a house of prayer. Goes in, it's the cleaning of the temple. Jesus comes in and cleans the temple. My confirmation class is going to catch on this. Because we've talked about kings cleaning the temple. Lacey, you remember what king, king cleaned the temple? Josiah. King Josiah, at the same time when he was king, some 650 years before Jesus was born, came in, they had a similar problem. The people were rebelling against God. They were rebelling about what God had done for them and doing all these other things that they shouldn't have been doing, rebelling against God, even in the temple. And Josiah comes and the King Josiah cleans the temple. 650 years later, Jesus comes back and the king cleans his temple again. And the people are catching this. The people know what's going on. The people know what's happening in here. In the week that it transpires, flip over to chapter 23, if you would, in your Bibles. In the week that transpires, those days ahead, instead of, instead of the king bringing that good news, instead of the king bringing the deliverance, instead of the king bringing his armies, the king is bringing tales of destruction, and tales of woe, and tales of judgment going in. And the people catch on to this, and you know the story that transpired. Jesus is uh, arrested by the Jews. He's condemned by the Jews in a kangaroo court. And then he's taken to Pilate going in. He says he's taken to Pilate, chapter 23, chapter 23, verse 3. And he's confronted by Pilate. He comes into Pilate, and he sits there and says, and Pilate asks him, are you the king of the Jews? Now, that's what it says. You want to know what it really says in here? Well, you got to write it into Jerusalem, but I didn't. You wrote in as king. I didn't get to write in as king. I had the army behind me. But well, you have a bunch of fishermen. But yeah, you ride in Jerusalem, and I don't get to ride in Jerusalem. You're king. And Jesus basically says, yeah, I'm king. Turn over to verse 38. He says, yeah, I'm king. And I'm going to show you what kind of king I am. Verse 38 says, and there was an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. The king has come into a city. The king has already come, and the king has already come into a city, and the king came into his city. And the king came into a city, yes, to fix their problems, but not the problems they thought. You can see, the fundamental thing was the people had a spiritual problem. And they had a spiritual problem, and they were looking for political answers to a spiritual problem. And my friends, that's never going to work. That's never going to work. A political answer is never going to solve a spiritual problem. Because the spiritual problem that they had was rebellion. Rebellion against God. 
And God comes in and God sends his son. God sends the one who was crowned king from the time of Mary. Crowned king by his people coming into his city. The king comes into his city to suffer and die. And God says, that's a spiritual problem. A spiritual solution to your spiritual problem. I've come and sent my son, the king, to die. Advent right is a time about preparation. It's about a time preparing for Jesus coming. Advent means coming. It's a time preparing for Jesus' advent. His second advent when, yes, he will come back with power, come back with glory, come back with his army of angels, and we'll see him as king. The lamb who was slain has begun his reign. We will see him in all his glory as king. But that's off into the future. And we wait for that. What we've got today is the king has come. The king came in a, born in a stable in Bethlehem and the king came into his city. And he came into his city to solve our spiritual problem. He came into his city to die. Bow your heads with me. Father in heaven, we ask you to bless us Bless us this Advent season as we prepare our hearts to celebrate your coming. Prepare our hearts for your second coming. Help us to live in this solution, the solution that you give us, the solution of your Son. We would not live in this rebellion, but live in grace and live in this faith and live in trust in you. Amen.